A circle graph is used to compare parts of a whole, and that's how we define circle graphs. Write this down in your notebook. Remember, we also define a bar graph comparing when you want to compare quantities or categories, you use a bar graph. When you want to compare, when you are uh, comparing uh, changes over time, you use a line graph. And a circle graph is used when you want to compare parts of a whole. Okay, so that's the difference uh, differences between those three graphs. The interior of a circle uh, represents a set of data, and the pie-shaped sections are the parts. All the percents given in the circle graph must add up to 100 percent. So if we are, if you are going to uh, create a circle graph, okay, all the parts in the circle must add up to. Oopsie. Okay, 100 percent. Okay, so this becomes important. Let's take a look at this example. The Earth's land area. Okay. And this was gathered from National Geographic Atlas of the World. Europe, 7.1% encompasses the Earth's land area. Australia, 5.2%. Asia, 30.30%. Uh, 30 South America, 12%. North America, 16.4%. And Africa, 20.4%. And if you notice, Asia, okay. Uh, encompasses most of the lands, uh, Earth's land area, okay, next to, uh, uh, ne followed by Africa and then North America, okay? And if you add all these percentages, this should equal 100% right here, okay? Let's take a look at how we can use that information to answer the following questions. What two continents make up more than half? Of the continental land area so more than half is more than 50 percent so if we uh, uh, look at this question more than half okay the continental land area would be 30 percent Asia and Africa would give you 50.4 percent that would be more than half so the answer would be Asia and Africa for letter A Okay, how many continents make up the other half? If you look at this one, what remains would be uh, Australia, Europe, Antarctica, South America, and North America. And that would be five continents. So the answer here would be five. Okay, Asia here, and The other half would be five. Asia and I forgot to highlight this one in Africa. There you go. Okay, and that's how you interpret a circle graph that has been presented to you. In next year, in seventh grade, we will learn how to create an, a circle graph and how to uh, how to make our own circle graph given data that have uh, been uh, rep uh, presented to us. Okay. Let's take a look at example number one. This is now in your book. Okay, the reasons why adults visit a fast food restaurant are shown in the circle graph. Okay, at the right, choosing a fast food restaurant. Uh, different reasons: convenient location, twenty-six percent; quality of food, twenty-five percent; percent menu selection, sixteen percent; fast service, twelve percent; reasonable prices, eight percent; and so on and so forth. Uh, various other reasons would be seven percent. Cleanliness, children's preference, brand name, all of those are reasons for choosing a fast food restaurant. By looking at this circle graph, what are the three most popular reasons for choosing a fast food restaurant? Letter A, and how does a fast food service compare to location as a reason for choosing a fast food restaurant? Okay, those are the questions we need to answer. Let's answer letter A. Okay. By looking at the sections of the circle graph, you can see that the three largest parts of the graph are location, food quality, and menu selection. So they are the three most popular reasons for choosing a fast food restaurant. And in letter B, how does fast food service compare 
fast service compared to uh, to location as as a reason for choosing a fast food restaurant okay the section relating to location is about twice the size of section relating to fast service so about twice as many people gave location as a reason uh, as a reason uh, uh, for uh, as to the one that gave fast service okay so by just looking at the circle graph, you can interpret uh, the circle graph and you can analyze what it means and uh, 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 pluck out information uh, with what uh, with the visual quality of uh, uh, the, uh, what the circle graph can uh, offer. Okay, let's take a look at example number two. The circle graph shows what fuels are used to generate power in the United States. And this is a 3D circle graph, three-dimensional circle graph. Coal, 65%, petroleum, 2%, hydroelectric, 10%, natural gas and nuclear power, 11%, and 22%, respectively. If, and if you look at that circle graph, this circle graph now becomes very attractive to the eyes because now it's 3D and it has... Uh, uh, illustrations on it which uh, uh, attracts uh, uh, attracts the, 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 the person looking at the circle graph okay which will uh, generate more interest okay which fuel is used to generate more electricity than others combined if you look at this circle graph you can see that the section representing coal covers more than half of the circle therefore it is used to generate more than the others combined and letter B, what two types of fuel together generate about the same amount of electricity as nuclear fuel. And if you look at nuclear fuel, it's 22%. And you try to look for two sources, which will uh, roughly add up to 22%. And that would be, okay, in this case, if you combine the sections represented by natural gas and hydroelectric fuel, they're about the same size as nuclear fuel. So they generate about the same amount of electricity as nuclear fuel. Okay. Another example. Okay. What major sources of marine? Uh, wait. If you look at this circle graph, and there's no question there. I haven't read a question yet. Sorry. What are the top two sources of marine pollution? Okay. And this is very evident from our circle graph. The top two sources of marine pollution are air pollution, okay, and runoff point discharges, which are 33 and 44%, respectively, okay. So that would be runoff and point, dis uh, runoff and point discharges in air pollution, which two sources of pollution together have about the same result as runoff and Runoff and uh, uh, point discharges. Runoff and point discharges is 44%. Okay, and if you look at uh, two numbers like dumping and air pollution, that would give you 43%. So roughly, air pollution and dumping would give you the approximate uh, number of, uh, close to 44%. So air pollution and dumping. Okay, or you can uh, also do air pollution and shipping because uh, 33 plus 12 will give you 45 percent which is also close to 44 percent okay lessons done on google form type a summary of what you've learned by responding to the objective of the lesson type of question you might want to ask about this lesson thank you